In this lecture, we are going to learn about the expression expressio unius est exclusio ulterius. The expression means to express one is to exclude others. Mentioning of one or more particular things may be taken to exclude others of the same kind. To make sense of the sentence in general English, this can be described as expressing one thing excludes another, which is not referred to. The effect of this rule means that if a list of specific words is not followed by general words, the act only applies in relation to the words given in the list. As an example, if a statute refers to mobile phones and e-book readers, they may not include notebooks. In the case of R against inhabitants of Sedgley, the poor relief Act 1601 levied taxes on lands, houses and coal mines in Karma. The court considered whether the taxes could be levied on owners of limestone mines. The court held that the act did not apply to limestone mines as these were not specifically mentioned. Moreover, the statute did not suggest that it would apply to other types of mines. Here is an example of the case where literal interpretation of the words resulted in absurd and obnoxious conclusion. A statute made it an offence to in commas, stab, cut or wound another person. In R against Harris, the defendant first bit a friend's nose in a fight and then bit a policeman's finger. The court held that the statute pointed towards the interpretation that the wounding should be inflicted with some instrument and not by teeth. The defendant was found not guilty. Despite the absurdity of the result, such decisions result in the enactment of better laws in Parliament. We do need to keep this in mind that the judges are only the interpreter of laws and cannot rewrite parliamentary legislation. Looking at these types of cases, these cases prove that the judiciary is simply interpreting the laws. Another example, Tempest against Kilner. The the statute of fraud 1677 required contracts for the sale of goods, wares and merchandise to be evidenced in writing where they were over a specified value. The court construed whether the statute applied to the sale of stocks and shares. The court held that stocks and shares were not covered by the statute as the specific words goods, wares and merchandise were not followed by general words. Application of this rule can be found in the relatively recent case of R against Secretary of State for the Home Department. In this case, the rule was used to exclude the father of an illegitimate child from rights under the relevant immigration laws. The applicant was born in Hong Kong to a Chinese mother. The father was English. The applicant applied for entry clearance to the United Kingdom as a student. Her intention was to reside in the UK permanently on the basis that her father was a British citizen. The application was refused on the ground that as an illegitimate child she had no claim under the Immigration Act 1971. The word parent within the meaning of Section 23A of the Immigration Act 1971 did not include the father of an illegitimate child. The court held that the definitions section mentioned the mother alone. This is the end of our lecture. Please do not forget to undertake exercises and quizzes, the link of which is given either under this video or at the end of this course. Thank you. In the next section, we are going to learn about different interpretation approaches.